In terms of the government efforts and their policies, what specifically uh, would be an example of them using AI or putting it as their national strategic priority? So the national strategic priority consists of uh, several elements, right? So for instance, that it's very important to set the standard, right? Set the AI standards uh, to promote at the national level. They also need to create the infrastructures, for instance, in China. What is the computing infrastructures? Because that is very critical. The other one is about the data securities and how to set the data standards. So they try to set these like, standards across the national level so that it set the basic infrastructures so that for the individual players, the enterprise, no matter it's the big tech or small tech, they have rules to follow. And of course, the other very interesting elements in China, it's about it's the competitive the market, right? So if you think about this way, it's not only about the policy setting, but also what is the market forces behind it? Because China is a highly competitive market so that the company have to compete like how to reduce the like the cost structure in terms of, for instance, like the software engineer costs, right, by using the uh, generative AI to improve the coding e efficiencies. So this is more about the internal operations. And in addition to that, all the companies like try to use the AI to improve the customer interface, right? So this is a both combination, like I said earlier. So the national agenda is true, it's very important, but more or less it's try to set up the infrastructure, which including the computing powers, the regulatory frameworks, to set the, the good environment so that the companies that compete for each other, when they compete with each other, eventually the market force will push the whole AI initiatives or productivities to the next level. As you're talking about competition, who are the lead players? Would it be the usual suspects? And when I mean that and I say that, would it be Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent? Well, it's true that literally all the big tech companies, like you mentioned, like Alibaba, like Tencent, and also TikTok, they spend a lot of the efforts and energies into this, like the AI domain of the implications. So, not not only develop the large language modeling, like the like the uh, you know Alibaba's model, Tongyi uh, Chengwen, but also more importantly, it's about how to apply it in the business context, right? So, for instance, like when Alibaba Group they 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 apply the large language modeling, they can apply it into the Din Talk, they can also apply it into Ali Cloud, so that internally it can really improve the efficiency. And in addition to that, I mean, I know that most of the focus people tend to uh, pay attention to this, like all the big tech companies. But in addition to that, there's a large number of the small media enterprise that they actively apply the AI in different domains. So if you take a look at the whole industry value chain, right? So nowadays, the large language modeling, it's more or less like become more mature, right? And But the issue in the whole business is, is about how can we capture the value? It's not only about the create value, how to capture the value in different domain of the business. And in that level, actually, literally, all the small, medium-sized companies, existing companies across different industries, different domains, they try to be very explorative. They try to understand that how does the AI can solve the business problem so that they can achieve the value capture part. It's not only about the value creation part. So it's a both a combination of the big tech companies and also the small, medium-sized companies. How would these Chinese players compare with their Western counterparts? Uh, because I know Baidu, Huawei, DeepSeek, they all use open source AI, uh, which is different to their Western counterparts. Well, to me, I think the fundamental logic of the large language modeling itself, like 
probably it doesn't have the huge difference, right? So, you know, every week, so if it's some point of time, there's a comparison of these like large language modeling. I would like to say in terms of the function that they can achieve at the current moment, and there's no huge difference between the large language modeling developed like, for instance, this DeepSeek versus like ChatGPT or Gemini, right? So what is the difference, personally, I believe is like, how does the company actively explore how to build the vertical applications based on this large language modeling to either decrease the cost of the operations, increase efficiency, or like how can they create a business context that they can use the large language modeling to capture the value, right? So um, from that perspective, I think like the Chinese company first, I think, uh, you know, they, they I, I feel that they are uh, first that they have to face the higher competitive environment, number one. Uh, number two, that especially in the certain domain or certain sectors that they have the rich data, okay? So you know that in terms of the application, the AI actually, how the quality of the data actually have a big influence on the, for instance, the prediction models or how creative that the solutions will come up, right? So if you compare that large language modeling versus you know, the no matter is the Chinese one or versus the, the you know outside China one, probably the difference is minimum, but we'll get into the application uh which is from one to one hundred, right? It's not from zero to one. Zero to one is more about like original innovation and Chinese company probably lag behind in certain domain. But once it get once the technology become getting more mature, right, from one to one hundred in terms of the applications, find the business domains to apply the technology on that specific domain, I think the Chinese company have certain advantages.